Hi, I am Shubhatara and in this video I am going to walk you through the Report Builder 3.0 and its features. Report Builder 3.0 is the next release of the report authoring component of SQL Server 2008 R2 reporting services. Report Builder 3.0 provides capabilities to further increase end-user productivity with enhanced wizards, more powerful visualizations and intuitive authoring. It also delivers an even more intuitive report authoring environment for business and power users with a Microsoft Office look and feel. Apart from the features that are provided by Report Builder 2.0, Report Builder 3.0 provides few additional features. They are the concept of shared data sets, grab and go reporting experience enabled through report part gallery, powerful data visualizations such as sparklines, data bars and indicators, support for maps and geospatial visualizations with integration to Bing Maps and support for SQL spatial data types, support for consuming SharePoint lists and Power Pivot models as data sources. Now let me demonstrate these features one by one. Launch the Report Builder 3.0 You can create a new report, a new data set, open a saved report and open a recently used report. So as soon as you launch the Report Builder 3.0, you get this wizard. Now let me choose the Table or Matrix wizard. Now you can choose an existing data set or create a new data set. Since I don't have any shared data sets, let me create a new data set click on the next button. You can choose the shared data source connections or you can create a new data source connection on click of new button. Now let me create a new data source. Click on the new button. Name the data source here as adventure works. Build the connection string. Select the database AdventureWorks LT2008. Test the connection and click on OK. Click on OK. Click on the next button. <coughs> Click on OK. Now to design the query you can use the existing tables or fields in the tables. You can import the query from the report server or you can edit the query as text. Now I already have the query ready. Let me copy this query and paste it here run the query you can see the results here click on the next button now let me group the columns on sales date and row groups on product and values let me drag the sales you can choose any other aggreg aggregate function other than the sum from this drop down click on the next button now choose the layout to be show subtotals and grand totals. Click on the next button. Let me choose a style. Click on finish. And you have your report here. Now when you go to the view tab, you can see report data properties ruler and grouping. You go on insert tab, you can see the data visualizations apart from that are provided newly in Report Builder 3.0. They are the data bar, sparkline, indicator and the map. You can see report parts. If you click on this, 
You can see the report part gallery pane here. You can view the report parts through details or through thumbnails. Now let me go and provide some formatting. Now sales date, go to home tab. It is of time date. Select this format, click on OK. Now for sum, let us provide currency dollar. Go and run the report. Now you can see the formatted report here. Go back to the design mode. Now let me demonstrate the features of Report Builder 3.0. The data visualization features of Report Builder 3.0. Now let me first insert a sparkline. Sparklines are little bars that pack a lot of information in a little space. They are like small charts that you can embed into your tablix. Now let me insert a column to the left, to the right. Now insert a rectangle here. Now inside this rectangle, let me insert a sparkline. Now choose the default column sparkline and click on OK. You can see that the height and width of the sparkline is too much. So let me make it compact and inline. Drag this. paste it here. Now you have to provide values. So click on sales and here click on sales date for category. Now copy the same thing and paste it here. Now click on the run button and you can see the spark lines here. If you see in this report, even though the values are too high, you can see the spark lines of the same height. So go back to the design mode and let me add some formatting to this spark line. Right click on the spark line, click on horizontal axis properties and say align axis and tape links. Click on OK. Right click horizontal axis properties say OK. Vertical axis properties, align axis and tablix and click on OK. Do the same thing for this too. Now go and run the report. Now you can see the spark lines with have, which are having relative heights. Now you saw how to add a spark line in your report. Let us go back to the design mode. delete columns. Now let me show you how to add a data bar to the report. Right click insert column to the right. Now come here and insert a data bar. By default let me choose this data bar and in values select sales. Go to and set how you set the axis properties. Tablix, OK and right click vertical axis. OK. Copy this and paste it here. Now go and run the report. You can see the data bars. Go back to the design mode. Data bars are nothing but typically contain one or few values 
it helps us to visualize quickly how the value differs from the other values in the cell and hence provides a better visualization to the users. This is how data bars are useful in our reports. Now let me show you the next visualization feature that is the indicator. Indicators are small icons that you can add to a report to show the status. To add the indicator first let me delete the column. Now insert a column to the right of sales data. Now go to insert tab and here you can see the in indicator. So drag and drop the indicator here. Now you can see a set of predefined indicator types. So let me choose the directional indicator. Click on OK. Now for this you have to add let me choose quantity and now right click and select indicator properties. Now go to values and states. Now here you can see the add and delete button. So you can add as many indicator types as you want or let me or delete even the indicator types. So let me delete this indicator that is shown to the right now here let me specify the indicator which is of red type from values that starts from 0 to 50 and from here 51 to 100. Now click on OK. Now copy this and paste it here. Now let me go and run this report. Now you can see that this quantity of sales that is more than 50 is indicated by green color and which is less than 50 is indicated through red color. Now come back to the design mode. Um, a new additional feature of Report Builder 3.2 is the ability to create reusable report paths. So one person who knows the data sources can create the items that might be included in reports and then someone who doesn't need to understand the structure of the backend data can lay them out in an appropriate manner. So as I showed you, when you go to insert tab, you can see the report paths. When you click on this, you can see the report um, paths that have been published in, the, in this report part gallery. Now suppose you want to publish the report part which is in your report that you have created you have to go click on this ribbon here select publish report paths now you have two options publish all report paths with default settings or review and modify report paths before publishing so click on this and you can choose the report paths that have to be published select them and click on publish to publish them this is how Report Builder 3.0 provides additional features such as report paths, powerful data visualizations that enable users to create reports easily. Thank you.